morning breaks and the group from Centennial arrives at the synchrotron. Tracy Walker's there to greet them and take them down Hi to the beam. Hi guys, how are ya? You have ready to go? Yeah. Ready to roll? Yeah? Okay, well we gotta go get signed in and then we'll go down to the beam lines and see if we can get started with some research. Okay, let's go. Over the next eight hours, these students will have the rare opportunity to conduct an experiment in one of the world's most advanced scientific facilities. Dr. Robert Blythe, staff scientist at CLS, will be their guide. The water sticks to the sides of the chamber and it takes a long time to pump down. After a quick run-through of the equipment, it's down to business. And if you get grease on the sample, it takes a long time to pump down. Dr. Blythe loads the soil sample into the vacuum chamber. Then the students get a chance to view their sample on the target pad. Put the light on so you can spot where the sample is. You tell me when you can see it. Uh, yeah, I can see it. Okay, and I'm gonna turn it off. And you should eventually be able to see a little blue dot. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Next, Dr. Blythe must draw down a near-perfect vacuum in the beam line before the shutters can be opened. When they do, light energy in the form of soft x-rays hits the target, sending vital data about which trace elements are showing up in the sample to the computer screens. Students, teachers and mentors gather round to analyze the data and decide what elements to search for next. And so what we're able to do using this technique, we, we can find the individual elements but even more importantly, we can also determine the chemistry that they have in that particular sample. And so what we hope to do is to take a soil that is straight from the field, compare it to a soil that we've um, simulated an acid rain, uh, we'll say the simulated acid rain effect, and to see how the chemical, the chemistry of those individual elements changes. We are just waiting for the scan to complete of the aluminum and we're just going to keep going through the scan to see how much each one changes. Nitrogen changes, iron changes. Everyone's thrilled to be doing real science at the synchrotron. When I first saw the results I was really excited because they were our ideas and our experiment and no one else had anything to do with it. So there are our answers to our questions. It's different from learning a classroom because like it's more hands-on where like in a classroom you're learning from books but here you're actually like actually doing using the scientific method and taking lab journals and actually using the synchrotron whereas in class you would actually just read about it so it's just really good. I think it's going to help me become a scientist because we can do practical things which can increase our uh, interest in that and uh, instead of just reading books uh, it it, uh, we can gain more knowledge by doing practical things. The experiments are teaching them as well as us, so it's kind of a teaching relationship between scientists and students. Jackie Gregoire is confident her students are getting a lot out of the event. <laughs> they're absolutely tickled, right, that something that they've collected and something that they've analyzed they're able to take a look at at the synchrotron. And they realize that most kids don't get to do this. During the course of the day, Dr. Robert Blythe has been gently guiding the students along. He says for a scientist, watching high school kids learn to use this kind of technology has been very exciting. Seeing the kids go from being very nervous at the start, not really sure, to being frankly a little too relaxed, you know, um, that's really exciting. And to see them start to think, instead of asking, is this right, or what does this mean, realizing they have to formulate it for themselves. And they can throw ideas past me, but I don't know the answer. Right? I think that is, I think that's very, very important. A few months later, Centennial Collegiate is holding an Earth Day event, where students display their projects to the school. The Beamline team have set up an exhibit and are showing some of the results they achieved at the synchrotron. This blue line shows us the water passed from the soil and this shows the acid passed from the soil and the difference between them like what happened to calcium or what happened to oxygen after passing acid or water. We have been invited to write an abstract and some other stuff to be submitted professionally. We also got asked to do a presentation the presentation behind us and we also have another presentation at the CLS to present later on. Jackie Gregoire is glad the project has gone so well. They can explain what they did to the, the soil. 
uh, because they've done it. It's real to them. It's authentic. Okay, they they followed something that is of their interest, and uh, they understand what's going on, and they've applied their biology and their chemistry uh, to try and do that. So, as far as I'm concerned, this is where I want to be. From his office on the second floor of the Saskatoon Public School Board building, Director George Rathwell reviews Centennial's progress. He says the board is fully committed to this new way of learning. Some of Abbott's thinking and speaking spurred our board, our, uh, that, that is the decision-making body, to make collegiate renewal, renewing learning, the, what, the, our approach to learning in our collegiates, as a learning priority, and they resourced it. And so that's helped uh, finance this change, if you want. And the change is taking place on a, on, uh, a system level. Uh, and it's unique in every building. Uh, uh, the, the experience that uh, I think at Centennial Collegiate is particularly unique because of the level of community involvement. The success of Centennial Collegiate's Academy of Science and Technology is a direct reflection of the hard work and commitment teachers, students, administrators, and Saskatoon's scientific community have invested in the program. It's a prime example of how schools can integrate John Abbott's principles of cognitive apprenticeship, problem-based learning, and school community collaboration into any curriculum. But more than that, it's about being willing to invest in our children's future. Barry Vyshutsky is Director of Education Services with the Saskatchewan School Boards Association. A lot of Saskatchewan communities take pride in saying, you know, our hockey team is better than your hockey team or our town is better than your town. And I think they'll naturally pick this up and say, so what can we do in our town that's different, unique? Uh, what can we do in our town to better connect our kids to their future? And the last word goes to John Abbott. Is the curriculum that we have offered in the past a curriculum simply about consumption as if everything can continuously grow in the present way? Or are you beginning to offer a curriculum that is about human, ecological, social, and spiritual sustainability? I hope this will start people wanting to ask more questions. Thank you.